Let's talk about soil microbes and if you should be using them with your synthetic nutrients. All right, this is a hotly debated topic right now, so let's dive into it and figure it out. Hey, but before we do, today's video is brought to you by Real Growers Recharge. If you want stronger, healthier plants, if you want bigger roots for better fruits, you gotta check out Real Growers Recharge. It's like an instant compost tea that holds more nutrients at your root zone breaks those nutrients down and makes them more plant available, getting more of your nutrients into your plants. Find out more about Recharge over at realgrowers.com. And while you're there, use coupon code SCOTTY420 to get 20% off your first order. Now let's get back to the show. Come on, Hi, see you ready? Yeah, man. So this is a hotly debated topic sure. right now. And I, I need you to help me understand this. So Every grower that I know that grows with orga organics, sure. they swear by having some sort of microbes. You have to. Uh, why? Why do you have to have microbes if you're growing with organics? Organic molecules are huge. The actual uh, nutrient mm -hmm. is small. So what we're doing with the microbes with organics is we're mining that nutrient out of out of that organic particle we're going to leave that organic particle to become part of the soil that's where organics is so great for soil building and then those microbes are going to take they've got that little bit of nutrient in them and they're going to deliver it to the plant so without the plant without the microbes the plant can't make use of those nutrients. yes the plant just makes a sugar to attract the microbes and then the microbes are mobile they're the ones that are able to make their own acids and solubilize nutrient solubilize the nutrient out of that organic particle leave the rest for soil and deliver that nutrient to the plant okay so that makes perfect sense to me the the organic nutrients mm -hmm. the microbes have to do like a transactional yep. thing and get those nutrients into the plant make them plant available yes but synthetic nutrients are already plant available aren't yes they? they're immediately plant available you know the chemist got a hold they said hey what's the nutrients that are actually that the microbes are mining hey we can use chemicals to make those so we're taking the shortcut and just making the nutrients mm -hmm. so that give us a different problem we don't have to worry about making the nutrients we have to worry about regulating the nutrients buffering mm -hmm. the nutrients if we pour too much immediately plant available food uh, it's it's no good Okay, so that answers my question because I was like, well, I see why the microbes are necessary for organic nutrients. Right. But the main job that they do isn't needed for synthetics. But then you say other problems arise that the microbes then will also help. For. Yeah, that's not the job of the microbes with synthetic nutrients, not to break down those nutrients and make them plant available. I think that's where the confusion comes from. Okay, so I've seen experts and other talking heads out there saying mm -hmm. that if you're feeding with synthetics adding microbes to the mix is just a waste of money you're saying that's not and is this because you sell microbes so you just want to sell as many of, of them as possible no it's because i've never done organics and i was very having a problem with uh, my synthetics as mm -hmm. to where i really had to keep my ph in range and then when i learned about be beneficial soil microbes when i started putting earthworm castings and incorporating them into my mix mm -hmm. things got easier all of a sudden the ph became it, uh, the plant became less reactive just happier in general so this is a big deal yeah i found re i founded uh, real growers and promoted real growers recharge but it's because i believe in the science okay so say that i am using synthetic nutrients what are some of the benefits that i'll still get by using beneficial microbes sure so we talked about this the microbes colonize around the root zone around the rhizosphere mm -hmm. and so they're able to regulate they're able to this is a port and so the microbes are able to regulate the amount of nutrient that is going through them into the root zone. Don't forget the microbes need a healthy plant to thrive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about some of the specific uh, microbial life that's going on there and how they help, uh, especially if you are using synthetic nutrients. Sure. So I tell you what, everybody's heard of mycorrhizae, right? Mm -hmm. Mycorrhizae expands the root zone. It's like a coating on the root zone. So it expands their water and nutrient holding capability. And it's also creates, it's the other side of the port and it creates a very favorable environment for nutrient exchange. Mycorrhizae can run on a different pH level than just your bare plant root. So that's a big deal. I, I always think of the those big fuzzy roots and then you always say bigger roots, better fruits. Better fruits, absolutely, man. Absolutely. 
Oh, I was going to say, there's another one. There's a fungi that gets slept on a lot, but it's uh, trichoderma. Okay. Trichoderma is this aggressive fungi that colonizes in the soil. Uh, it uh, makes some antibiotics and some things that will uh, uh, kill pathogens, but it also it makes soil structure. So it holds the soil particles together. Uh, it's a fungi. So think of a fungal network throughout your soil. Mm. So it uh, expands the nutrient holding capability. It uh, fights off pathogens. It is really cool. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so we got mycorrhizae, trichoderma. What are some other beneficial microbes that you can still benefit from even if you're growing synthetic? Yeah. And uh, so Bactillus subtilis, we have that in recharge. Um, that uh, suppresses pathogens. So that's how you keep a nice, healthy plant. If you've got trillions and trillions of Bacillus subtilis that are nutrient solubilizers, and then uh, you know some pathogen comes in, there's just no place for it to colonize. It's like, hey, this isn't a good space, man. Mm -hmm. And so all of this has been plant health. There's also microbes that kind of help them resilient to like pests and other, other types of stuff as well, right? Yeah, all these, whether it's the trichoderma or the bacillus or the mycorrhizae, they all need to live. So they're all secreting exudates and making chemicals and working with each other uh, to keep the plant healthy. I forget the plant, the, the idea is for the plant to stay healthy. All these organisms, all these microbes need a healthy plant if they want to thrive. Yeah. So understanding it from this point of view kind of makes me uh, wonder why somebody would think just because you're growing with synthetics, you don't want all of these additional benefits. Because it's inert. When you think of synthetics, uh, originally it was built on rock wool or a lot of these books were built on rock wool. Rock wool is spun rock. They take inert rock and they heat it up. So they weren't giving much thought to, you know, this was made and this was popular like in the eighties and the nineties. They weren't giving much thought to microbial life. They were thinking of science. They were drunk on science back then, you know, Hey, we learned this chemical simulates the, the stuff we get from microbes. So let's pour it on the plant. Hey, it grows. Mm. Yeah. yeah. All right, so now that you've got me convinced that I do need some sort of, because I also I grow with grow dots. I don't I don't uh, use the or, I don't think I'm advanced enough for the organic growing yet. Um, hey, hang on, you say that if you really understand organic growing and somebody teaches it to you. I don't think it has to be complicated. It is a system that you have to understand, and it has to be built right. So I don't want to poo-poo on organics. I'm just speaking from <laughs> I'm just speaking from my point of view. It's sure. a little bit intimidating. Sure, you didn't get my poo-poo on organics joke. Oh no, oh, I forget do. it. Okay, all right. Uh, speaking of poo-poo, a way to get some of these uh, microbes into your soil, into your media. Uh, does poop work? <laughs> yeah sounds like a bumper sticker right poop works ah. now you've got bat guano which is bat poop those bats eat and the, what they're pooping out is loaded with nutrient and what's crazy about that is it matters what the bats eat what cave they're in and where it is in the world according to what nutrients they have it's kind of crazy fish Earth, poop fish poop yeah fish poop is good stuff man you should try it what were you gonna say earthworm castings earthworm oh. poop okay so Poop works. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be collecting poop compost, though. I know that. Well, compost. that's what it is. Pop compost is you put a little bit of brown stuff on there. You put a little bit of green stuff on there in the right proportions. The microbes are attracted to the <laughs> brown stuff. <laughs> and uh, that's that's how you know the composting starts. And then turning that into a compost tea. Yes, or a a nutrient rich compost is what I'll say. You can make a compost tea or do whatever you want with it. Okay, so I looked up how to make compost tea. It looked gross yeah. and it looked also time consuming. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely, I'm a synthetic grower and really didn't want to, I was just in a small house. I didn't have the, I didn't think I had the resources and the time and the energy to start composting and making ferments and whatnot. So yeah, when I found Recharge, it really was a shortcut for me. And Recharge is kind of like uh, instant compost. So you just mix water in and then it provides all those microbes. And yeah. Like if, um, if they go, what do you do at the airport? I go, I sell an instant compost tea. Yeah, that's the easiest way to describe it.
Hey, I know I'm the guy that sells recharge, so I don't want you to take my word for it. I'm also a grower that had tremendous success once he incorporated microbes into his grow. So head on over. We have a community over at realgrowlab.com. Check it out over there and just take a look at how many growers are having success using microbes, how many growers are having success using recharge, and make your own decisions from there. And that includes lots of growers using synthetic nutrients. Hey, so for me, I'm all on board using beneficial microbes has completely changed the way I grow. But that's just me. I love using beneficial microbes with synthetics. It's been a huge advantage for me. But what about you? Do you grow organically? Do you grow synthetically? Do you grow synganically with microbes? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, please hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and check out the other couple videos YouTube's recommending. I hope you like them.